to ask my usual question at the end of Thursdays in class work, but I, from looking at people's work, I think it's pretty obvious what we should spend a little more time on, and that's solving equations with powers or roots. I never really talked about this as its own section because hypothetically you learn this in 102 or whatever prerequisite course you take, but it seems to be something that people are struggling on, which is fine. We'll spend the day trying to get this material down. So let's start with powers. We can then do roots next. If your equation involves some expression, maybe, maybe this expression is just x, maybe it's something more complicated. We'll look at a few examples, but if your equation involves some expression, raised to a power, then you're going to have to do two, maybe three things. Thing one is to get the expression by itself. Thing two is to raise both sides of the equality to the recipient power. And then step three, maybe step sounds a little more elegant than the thing. Step three, solve for x. So let's see how this works. In a series of increasingly more complicated examples, let's say we're trying to solve x cubed equals 5. Just jotting down the first example that comes to mind. So we already have the expression and the power by itself on one side of the equation. So step one is sort of a tick without us doing anything. That x to the power is by itself on one side of the equality already. Step two, raise both sides of the equality by the reciprocal of the power. So the reciprocal of three is one third and 
We're raising both sides of the equation, both sides of the equality by one third. And this is like undoing subtraction using addition or undoing multiplication via division. When we have these powers, the original power and then the reciprocal, those cancel each other out. That's the purpose of this step. And we are, in this case, left with x equals 5 thirds. So check. Step three is solve for x. Well, x is as solved for as it can possibly be. We have x equals five to the one third power. The only thing we could maybe see our way to doing here is we might want to get a decimal approximation. 1.70, I think we've used this notation before, but just as a reminder, that sort of squiggly equality stands for is approximately equal to, it means we're rounding the thing, basically. So that was an elementary example, maybe a little too elementary because we didn't get to see two out of the three steps being done. Maybe we want something slightly more intricate. Example two. Let's solve <coughs> one plus x to the five thirds equals nine. So we see a power. And the temptation that I think a lot of students feel is to try to get rid of the power immediately, to just immediately raise both sides to the three-fifths power. That's not going to work, though. Before we raise anything to any sort of power, we want the power by itself on one side of the equality. So in particular, that one is not welcome here. Let me write down these steps. And the algebra, or the pre-algebra, isn't, or hopefully isn't, so hard here. If we don't want a 1, we can subtract it away. x to the 5 thirds equals 8. Only now <coughs> do we raise both sides to a power. We've gotten rid of the, or rather, we've gotten the expression by itself, 
Now we want to raise to a power, and more specifically, we want to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. The reciprocal of five thirds is three fifths. And the point of raising to the reciprocal power is that on the left you'll have that cancellation and the expression, in this case just x, is by itself. And I selected a slightly more complicated example too. But step three is still kind of vague. Solve for x. Well, there's not really any solving to be done here. x is 8 to the three fifths. We could, if we were so inclined, get a decimal approximation for this. Eight to the three divided by five, about 3.48. Well, that's not solving for x, that's just rounding. So we should look at a more complicated still example, where all of the steps I've laid down actually need to happen. But before we escalate, does anybody have any questions about where we are now? Uh, so it's not valid to square root both sides by the equivalence of the power. Square root, you mean it, we would not want to write x the five thirds root of x. Yeah, if that's so that wouldn't be valid. We wouldn't want to write that. That's uh, probably not good notation. Okay. So, example. Three. Let's say O two plus X minus one to the one third power equals eight. So now instead of X to a power, we have an expression raised to a power. And yet, the first and the second step are going to be the same. We're going to need to get this expression by itself. So we don't want that two there. So for our first step, Let's subtract 2 from both sides and get x minus 1 to the 1 third equals 6. Now that we have that, that power by itself over on the left, we can... Um, cube both sides. We can raise both sides to the reciprocal of one third. And I mean, I say we can do that. What I really mean is 
We have to do that. A mistake students sometimes make is to try to simplify what's in the power. For example, by adding one to both sides before they get rid of the power. But as I say, that is a mistake. We want to get rid of the power first, then we can worry about that <coughs> negative one. So, step two, is to take both sides and raise them to the reciprocal power. Maybe it would be a little less visually ugly if we used parentheses there. On the left, our powers will cancel. Someone who has their calculator out, do six to the third for me. Uh, 216. 316? Uh, 216. 216, thank you. And now, finally, uh, we have to do our third step. I mean, we're pretty close, but our third step, you see, says solve for x. We want x by itself on one side of the equality. So, in particular, that minus 1 has to go. And we can add one to both sides. And get that x is 217. Everything I've said continues to work if instead of powers, you have roots. And that's because roots are powers. I don't know how sort of how well this is taught or how well students really internalize this, but having the nth root is the same as having the one over n power. So one way to deal with roots is to just rewrite them as powers and then deal with them like we dealt with the last three examples. So if we have, for example, the fifth root of 2x minus 1 equals 1, let's say, we can rewrite this as 2x minus 1 to the 1 fifth and then proceed from there. Um, that power is already isolated by itself. So step one is basically done before we got to the problem. The reciprocal of one fifth is five. So 2x minus 1 to the 1 fifth. We'll raise everything to the fifth power. 
one is a kind of goofy number because one to the fifth is still one. So on the left, our powers cancel. On the right, one to the fifth is still one, but we still have a little, I always feel weird saying algebra because it's an algebra class, but I don't know quite what else to call it, a little more algebraic messing around before our answer is finished. We want x by itself. We are therefore solving for x in a way that is hopefully pretty straightforward. So I wanted to, I mean, I was inspired to do this because people seem to be struggling with it on the inverse homework. Let's maybe do one last sort of example where I say, find the inverse of f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 to the 3 fifths power. So I'm, I'm never trying to trick you. So let's first just say if I say to find the inverse, the inverse exists. We don't need to mess around with the horizontal line test. We just need to solve for x. And what then should my first step be? Um, take the square root out. I mean the um, the three-fifths, so you would make um, it five, right? Five-thirds is right. I don't think that should necessarily be our first step, though. I think maybe that would be better as a second step. We need to unwrap it, uh, reverse order of operations. We need to divide by two first. Right. I mean, and undo the order of operations is correct. Maybe just putting it a little less technically. I mean, step one is to get the power by itself. That two isn't part of the power, so it should be moved on the other side of the equation. And to undo multiplication by two, we divide by two. And now the power is by itself, and now I agree with you. If we raise both sides to the five-thirds power, then on the right, the five-thirds and the three-fifths cancel, and we're left with that. Then doing step three to round the problem out, we can add one to both sides. One plus y over two to the five-thirds equals x. And 
Based on your class work, some students seem to want to, and I, I don't, it's fine if you do. I have never been a believer of interchanging X and Y. Again, just because X and Y mean stuff. And if you interchange X and Y, then you're changing what X and Y mean in the last step of the problem, which I think is kind of confusing. That was all I had for you in terms of new material. You'll get your class work out. I looked at all of the um, test review that I got. So as usual, no news is good news. I looked at every problem. If I didn't mark it up, it means it was right. And I'll get that back to you after I pass out the in-class work.